A long time ago, there lived a man named Wilson, a womanizer who promises many women marriage, but ends up running away after getting intimate with them. Wilson, the womanizer, pulled the same stunt with Sarah, a lovely girl. On the day they were supposed to tie the knot, Wilson took a heap cash from Sarah, promising her internal love. But when the big day arrived, Wilson didn't show up, leaving Sarah heartbroken and betrayed. As Sarah wept, the guests at the wedding laughed and made fun of her and her family. Sarah felt so hot and angry that she couldn't hold it anymore. Anger boiled inside her and in her fury, she laid a curse upon Wilson, saying that if he ever had daughters in future, none of them would find marital bliss. Men would use them, discard them, and leave them at the altar, just as Wilson had done to her. They would suffer just like she did. They wouldn't find love, and men would treat them badly, just like Wilson treated her. As soon as Sarah uttered this curse, a tempest brewed in the skies, reflecting the storm raging within her heart. Suddenly, the sky turned dark, and a big storm began to brew. It was as if even nature was angry at what Wilson had done to Sarah. Many years later, Wilson found himself the father of three beautiful daughters. His eldest daughter, Lisa, was a bright and spirited young woman. Wendy, the middle child, possessed a kind heart and a gentle spirit. Kyra, the youngest, was full of energy and mischief, always keeping the household lively. Despite his past mistakes, Wilson loved his daughters dearly and did his best to be a good father to them. He watched with pride as they grew into strong, independent women, each with their own dreams and aspirations. But deep down, Wilson couldn't shake the feeling of guilt for the pain he had caused Sarah and many other women in the past. Wilson prayed fervently that no one would ever treat his daughters the way he had treated many women in the past. He knew firsthand the pain and heartache that came from broken promises and shattered dreams. Every night, he prayed for their happiness and safety, hoping that they would find partners who would cherish and respect them. As Wilson watched his daughters grow, he made a conscious effort to instill in them values of honesty integrity and empathy. He wanted them to know their worth and to never settle for anything less than genuine love and respect in their relationships. And as they ventured out into the world, Wilson hoped and prayed that they would be spared from the same mistake he had made and that he would find the happiness and fulfillment he had once foolishly denied others. Despite being 30, Lisa, Wilson's oldest daughter, hasn't found the right person yet. She has been in many relationships, but none lasted long. What's different about Lisa is that she is saving herself for marriage. Whenever things get too close with her boyfriends, she says no, sticking to her decision to wait for marriage. Some guys respected her choice, but other guys get upset and leave. But Lisa stays firm in her belief that saving herself for marriage is important. She wants a love based on trust and respect, and she thinks waiting for the marriage is part of that. Even though it's tough sometimes, Lisa keeps hoping she will find someone who shares her values. She believes true happiness is worth waiting for. As Lisa observed her boyfriends from university and even younger classmates getting married, she felt worried. At 30, she knew time was passing, and she felt pressured to find someone. She always wanted to wait until marriage for intimacy, but now she wondered if that was why her relationships never lasted. Seeing others settle down made Lisa doubt her choice. She thought maybe waiting for marriage was stopping her from connecting more deeply with someone. She worried about being left behind while others moved on with their lives. Wendy, 27 years, like Lisa, experienced similar heartaches. However, unlike Lisa, Wendy chose to compromise her values in hopes of keeping her boyfriends. 
She believed that offering intimacy would make them stay. But sadly, it only led to disappointment. Each time Wendy engaged in physical intimacy with her boyfriends, hoping it would deepen their connection, they ended up feeling irritated with her afterwards. She felt used and discarded, realizing that her attempts to keep them had only pushed them away further. Kiara, at the age of 23, found herself in love with Desmond, her first boyfriend. They shared a strong bond, but there was a problem. Desmond constantly pressured Kiara for intimacy. Despite her feelings for him, Kiara wasn't ready for that step and consistently refused his advances. As time went on, Desmond's request for intimacy became more frequent and intense. He started to threaten Kiara, saying he would leave her if she didn't give in to his demands. Kiara felt torn between her love for Desmond. She struggled with the fear of losing him, but she also knew she shouldn't compromise her values. Kiara wondered if Desmond truly loved her for who she is or just for what he wanted from her. It was a difficult decision for her to make and she didn't know what the future held for their relationship. A few days later, Desmond made a surprising move by taking Kiara to meet his parents as the young woman he wants to marry. Despite their earlier intentions, Kiara felt touched by Desmond's gesture and nervous about meeting his family. To her relief, Desmond's parents welcomed her warmly into their home and expressed their happiness at meeting her. They assured Kiara that they saw her as part of their family and promised to visit soon to make the necessary arrangements to welcome her officially. Kiara is overwhelmed with gratitude for the acceptance and support she received from Desmond's family. It gave her hope that their relationship is meant to be. As Desmond took Kiara around his mansion, showing her every corner and envisioning it as their future home, Kiara felt a rush of joy. His gestures made her believe in the possibility of a happy future together. However, when Desmond attempted to get intimate with her upstairs in his room, Kiara remained firm in her decision to wait until marriage. Desmond's frustration grew as Kiara continued to refuse his advances, reminding him of the importance of patience and commitment. He couldn't understand why she was resisting, especially after he had introduced her to his parents as the woman he wants to marry. Feeling conflicted and overwhelmed by Desmond's persistence, Kiara struggled to maintain her boundaries. She reasoned that since Desmond had showed her to his parents, he must truly really love her and intend to marry her. Despite her initial reluctance, she eventually gave in to Desmond's demands, hoping that it would solidify their bond and lead to the future they had dreamed of together. However, deep down, Kiara couldn't shake the feeling of unease. She knew that compromising her values wasn't the right choice, but in the moment, her desire for love and acceptance clouded her judgment. As she reluctantly gave in to Desmond's desires, she couldn't help but wondered if she was making a mistake that would hurt her in the days to come. Desmond felt really happy when Kiara agreed to be intimate with him. He kissed her ears and said he wanted this moment to be unforgettable. Kiara smiled and told Desmond she loved him. Desmond kissed her passionately, making Kiara feel things she never felt before. She moved with him, feeling excited for what is to come. Desmond took things further, and although Kiara felt some pain at first, she found it strangely sweet. Desmond checked if she's okay, and Kiara said she's just feeling a bit of pain because it's her first time. Desmond apologized and said it would get easier with time. Kiara smiled and said she was enjoying it. Kiara smiled and said she was enjoying it, encouraging Desmond to keep going. Desmond went deeper kissing Kiara's breast passionately, causing her to mourn with pleasure. They both enjoyed the intimate moment together, after which Kiara went home. Kiara and Desmond's relationship became even closer after their intimate moment. They spent a lot of time together, enjoying each other's company and growing even more connected. 
Desmond and Kiara spent almost a whole month enjoying their time together intimately before Desmond decided to surprise her with a big proposal party. He invited Kiara's family, friends and everyone who cared about her. It was a total surprise for Kiara and she couldn't stop smiling. Her siblings, Lisa and Wendy, were happy too. Although they had also hoped for something similar to happen to them someday. They prayed for their own happy moments like Kiara's. Wilson is really happy that one of his daughters, Kiara, is getting married. He has been worried about his daughter's futures for a long time. So seeing Kiara find happiness made him feel relieved and joyful. He looks forward to celebrating Kiara's wedding with her and Desmond and he wished them all the best. The wedding cards were all sent out and everything is ready for Desmond and Kiara's big day. Uncles and aunties traveled from far and near to join in the celebration. Everyone was filled with happiness and anticipation for the wedding day tomorrow. That evening, just before the wedding, Desmond called Kiara and asked her to come over. Desmond wanted to make Kiara feel special, so he took her out that evening to buy new clothes, shoes, and lots of other goodies. They spent time together in the mall, thinking now the perfect outfit and enjoying each other's company before the big day. It is a sweet and thoughtful gesture that made Kiara feel even more excited for their wedding. After they finished shopping at the mall, Desmond and Kiara went to Desmond's house to rearrange the room. They wanted to make it look more like a married couple's room and less like a bachelor's pad. They moved furniture around, hung up some new decorations and added personal touches to create a cozy and welcoming space for their life together. As Desmond and Kiara finished arranging the room, they found themselves holding each other close, surrounded by the soft glow of candlelight. Desmond gently touched Kiara's cheek looking into her eyes with all the love in his heart. Kiara, he whispered, I promise to always be there for you, no matter what. You mean everything to me. Kiara felt her heart swell with love as she reached for Desmond's hand. Desmond, I love you more than anything, she said. With you, I feel like I can do anything. In that moment, Desmond made a vow to Kiara promising to marry her not just in this life but in every life they shared. They kissed passionately, knowing that their love would endure forever. That night, after making their promises, Desmond and Kiara became intimate, sealing their love with a deep connection. Kiara arrived home late that night and went straight to bed, exhausted from the day's events. The next morning, which is her wedding day, her two elder sisters helped her get ready making her look stunning, beautiful for her big day. Meanwhile, Desmond's parents helped him get dressed and ready for the wedding. They filled with excitement and joy for their son as he prepared to start this new chapter of his life with Kiara. As the time for the wedding approached, Desmond's parents, along with his uncles and aunties, made their way to the church. Desmond had told them he would be arriving with his best man, Adding to the anticipation and excitement surrounding the special day, Kiara and her family arrived at the church along with other invited guests, eagerly awaiting Desmond's arrival. However, hours passed and Desmond still hadn't shown up. His parents tried calling him, but there was no answer. They even sent someone to check on him at home, but Desmond wasn't there. As time went on, Everyone grew increasingly worried. Kiara called Desmond repeatedly, but he didn't speak up. Eventually, it became clear that Desmond was nowhere to be found. Desmond suddenly found himself in a hotel, bewildered and confused. It felt as though some unseen force was controlling him, leading him away from the church where he was supposed to be getting married. Hours passed and there was still no sign of Desmond. Kiara cried in the church, devastated by his absence. As night fell, everyone went home, their hearts heavy with worry and confusion. Kiara cried herself to sleep that night. Why Wilson, her father, couldn't help but feel a sense of guilt. He remembered how he had treated Sarah in the past 
and now he wondered if his daughter was suffering because of his past mistakes. The next day, Desmond left the hotel and returned home. When his parents saw him, they were relieved to see that he is safe. However, they were also filled with questions and concerns. Desmond's parents asked him why he hadn't shown up for his own wedding. They wanted to know why he had made them the subject of insults in front of all the people they had invited to celebrate the special day. Desmond, still feeling disoriented and confused from the events of the previous day, struggled to find an explanation. He couldn't understand how he had ended up in a hotel room instead of the church where he was supposed to be getting married. As he tried to piece together what had happened, Desmond's parents urged him to tell them the truth. They wanted to understand why their son had disappeared on such an important day and left everyone worried and disappointed. Desmond replied to his parents, Dad, I really can't explain what happened to me. I was on my way to the church, but I suddenly decided to divert and lodged in a hotel room. His parents were puzzled and asked him why he hadn't answered his phone calls. Desmond explained that his phone had suddenly become blank and he couldn't use it to call anyone. He also shared that whenever he tried to leave the hotel room, he felt a strange force pulling him back, preventing him from leaving. Back at Kiara's house, her sisters suggested that she go to Desmond's place to talk to him face to face about why he didn't show up for the wedding. Kiara agreed and decided to take their advice. She visited Desmond unannounced and went straight to his room to have a conversation with him. Seeing Desmond inside the room, Kiara felt a mix of relief and frustration. She asked him why he had disgraced her like that, why he had played with her emotions and made her the subject of mockery. Desmond approached her, wanting to comfort her, but Kiara warned him not to touch her. She demanded answers. But Desmond could only repeat that he couldn't explain what had happened to him the previous day. Despite his inability to provide a clear explanation, he insisted that he truly loved her. Unable to understand how Desmond could claim to love her, yet leave her at the altar without any explanation. She felt hurt and betrayed by his actions, and she wanted answers. Desmond said, I really love you. If you don't believe me, let's go to the court and get married there right now. Kiara agreed, so they went to the court. But when they got there, Desmond acted strangely. He suddenly told Kiara to get out of the car and then drove away without explaining why. Kiara is left confused and upset by his actions. She took a cab back to Desmond's place and found him in his room. She asked him, what his actions at the court meant. Desmond replied, I don't understand myself. I don't know why I did what I did, but I know for sure that I truly love you. Kiara hissed in frustration and left the room. Desmond chased after her, trying to explain what had happened to him. He tried to make Kiara understand that he felt like a force was controlling him, but Kiara refused to listen. When Kiara got home, she told her family everything that happened at Desmond's house and at the court. She explained how Desmond acted strangely and claimed that a strange force was controlling him. Her family hugged her tightly, trying to make her feel better, but Kiara couldn't stop worrying. The next day, Desmond visited Kiara at her place. Kiara had no interest in talking to him because she believed he would continue lying. But Lisa encouraged her to hear him out, saying that if Desmond truly didn't love her, he wouldn't have come to see her. Kiara went outside to talk to Desmond in his car. She asked him what he wanted after all the fake promises and intimacy they had shared. Desmond interrupted her and said, I want us to go see my friend's pastor. I believe something is wrong. That's why on the two occasions we were supposed to get married. Something strange always happened. 
Kiara felt uneasy about going, but she reluctantly followed Desmond anyway, unsure of what would happen next. Despite her doubt, she decided to trust Desmond and see where their journey would lead. At the church, they met the pastor, a kind man, who listened carefully as Desmond explained what had been happening. The pastor had a revelation about a woman who was crying on her wedding day. The woman laid a curse on a man named Wilson. The pastor asked them if they knew anyone named Wilson because he had the vision of a woman laying a curse on Wilson, saying that none of his daughter would get married. Kiara and Desmond were surprised to hear her father's name and the revelation. Wilson is my future father-in-law. They all left the pastor's office and headed to Kiara's home. Wilson found Lisa and Wendy crying because their boyfriends had broken up with them. Wilson comforted his daughters, offering them support during this difficult time. Kiara asked the pastor to come inside the house so they could all sit down and talk. This revelation has troubled me deeply and I felt compelled to come here and discuss it with you. Wilson looked serious as he heard the pastor's words. He frowned and thought hard. Everyone waited quietly for Wilson to respond, feeling anxious about what he would say. Wilson nodded and said yes. Lisa, Wendy and Kiara exclaimed, Dad, you left someone on your wedding day? Wilson responded, yes. I was just a young man back then. I wanted to enjoy my youth and not be tied down to a committed relationship. The pastor responded, The woman you abandoned on her and your wedding day placed a curse on you, and now it's affecting your daughters. They won't be able to get married until you find her and apologize to her. Lisa stood up angrily, confronting her dad. Dad, we looked up to you like a king. Not realizing you were the cause of our problem, she exclaimed. Wendy joined her sister, shouting at their dad, You need to find that woman and apologize, because I'm tired of living in your house. We are not getting any younger. Our peers are already married. Wendy remarked, expressing the urgency of their situation. Kiara also stood up, echoing her sister's sentiments. All this time, I've been blaming Desmond for not showing up to our wedding. Not knowing the cause of my problem is my own father, she said. Desmond intervened, calming the sisters down and reminding them that it wasn't the time to blame their father. He suggested that they should find a way to locate Sarah so everyone could apologize to her. The pastor agreed with Desmond's suggestion. Desmond asked Wilson how they could locate Sarah. However, Wilson admitted he had no idea. He only remembered her village, but couldn't recall her family's house anymore. Desmond suggested they start by visiting Sarah's village. The pastor agreed, and before leaving, he prayed with everyone for guidance and success in their endeavor. Then he headed back to the church. Desmond, Wilson, and his three daughters set out on a journey to find Sarah's village. They traveled for two days, searching tirelessly until they finally found the exact village they were looking for. Their challenges didn't end there. When they asked about Sarah in the village, the villagers informed them that there were many people named Sarah in town. Some even requested her surname to narrow down the search, but Wilson couldn't remember it. This added to their difficulty in finding her. Moreover, after so many years, things had changed and Wilson couldn't recall Sarah's house anymore. This further complicated their search. The pastor also reached out to them over the phone to offer comfort and encouragement after they expressed their frustrations to him. He urged them not to give hope and assured them that they would find a way to overcome their obstacles. The pastor also prayed with them over the phone, asking for God's guidance wisdom and direction in their search. He encouraged them to stay strong in their faith. Immediately after the prayer, Desmond proposed a plan. He suggested that since there were many Sarahs in the village, 
they should start by visiting the houses of all the Syrians who were above 55 years old. This way, they hoped to either locate Sarah or gather information about her. Everyone agreed to Desmond's suggestion. The next day, they began their search. They spent almost two weeks searching tirelessly, but unfortunately, they couldn't find any leads on Sarah's whereabouts. When they became frustrated and wanted to go back, worried about losing her job. However, Lisa reminded her that their mission was more important than their jobs. Kiara also expressed a desire to return home, but Desmond intervened, explaining that living now would mean giving up on their chance to get married. He reminded Kiara that he had put aside his own work for this mission and that they needed to stay committed. Wilson watched his children's determination and felt a deep sense of regret for his past actions. He prayed fervently for their success in finding Sarah, wishing he could turn back time and undo the mistakes of his youth. After another two days of searching, they finally found Sarah's home. Wilson recognized Sarah's mom sitting in front of the house. He informed his family that they had arrived at Sarah's home. They all breathed a sigh of relief. Approaching Sarah's mom, Wilson, Desmond, and his family exchanged pleasantries and explained their purpose. Sarah's mom inquired about their identity and the reason for seeking Sarah. Wilson introduced himself along with his children and Desmond. He went on to explain that he was the man who was supposed to marry Sarah over 33 years ago but failed to show up. Sarah's mom became extremely angry upon realizing that Wilson was the man who had deeply hurt her daughter. She promptly drove them away from her house, her heart heavy with sorrow and anger. Wilson continued to plead for forgiveness, explaining that he had been a confused young man and that he had come to apologize to Sarah. Sarah's mom was overcome with emotion, tears streaming down her face as she cried uncontrollably. After much pleading from Wilson's daughters, the old woman began to calm down. She instructed them to go to the back of her house, where they would find Sarah. They searched behind the house, but Sarah was nowhere to be found. Upon their return, the old woman tearfully told them that the grave at the back of the house was Sarah's final resting place. Everyone was filled with sadness upon hearing this devastating news. They made their way to Sarah's grave at the back of the house. Their hearts heavy with sorrow. Tears flowed freely as they stood beside the grave, mourning the loss of Sarah and worrying that they would find a resolution to the reason they had come. Despite the despair hanging heavy in the air, Desmond refused to give up. After spending more time in the backyard, he left everyone behind and approached Sarah's mom to inquire about what had happened to Sarah. Sarah's mom, sadly, recounted how Sarah had passed away a few years ago while returning from her daughter's house in the city. Desmond, feeling a deep sense of responsibility and remorse, he asked if there was any way for them to meet Sarah's family and apologize for the pain his future father-in-law had caused Sarah. She explained that Sarah had only one child from her relationship with Wilson. After discovering she was pregnant, no one was willing to marry her again due to her status as a single mother. As a result, Sarah made the decision not to marry again. Instead, she devoted her life to her daughter, Rose. Wilson overheard the conversation between Desmond and Sarah's mom. He asked her if it meant that Sarah had a child for him all these years. The old woman replied affirmatively, saying that her name is Rose and she lives in the city with her family. Wilson staggered upon hearing this news. He felt a deep sadness, realizing he had a daughter he never knew about and that he had missed out on being part of her childhood. Desmond pleaded with Sarah's mom for Rose's address, but the old woman refused, stating that Rose harbors a deep hatred towards Wilson, and she couldn't give out her address. While they were talking, Wilson's three daughters joined them, asking if it meant they had an older sister they didn't know about. Sarah's mom confirmed this, adding that Rose also didn't know she had sisters out there. 
After much pressure from Desmond and the girls, the old woman offered to invite Rose over for the weekend instead of giving out her home address. Mama called Rose on the phone and invited her to spend the weekend with her, along with her children and husband. The weekend is just three days away. Wilson, Desmond and the girls went back to the hotel to lodge. At the hotel, Desmond informed the pastor who promised to be there on Saturday. When Saturday arrived, the pastor arrived very early and they all went back to Sarah's home. There, Rose, her three kids, her husband and Mama were in the sitting room watching a movie. Mama didn't tell Rose that she invited her because of her supposed dad as she knew Rose wouldn't come if she knew. Wilson, Desmond, the pastor and the daughters entered Sarah's home and exchanged pleasantry with everyone. Mama then told Rose that the man standing there is her father. Why the three girls were her stepsisters? Rose stood up in anger, demanding an explanation from Mama. The pastor intervened, reminding Rose that to err is human and to forgive is divine. He explained that they knew what Wilson did was wrong, but asked for her forgiveness. However, Rose wasn't ready to listen to anyone and asked Wilson to leave the house. The daughter stepped in, pleading with Rose to forgive their dad, as they had only recently discovered they had an older sister, and their dad didn't know he had a daughter. Desmond also tried to calm the situation, and Rose's husband urged her not to be too quick to anger. After much words of wisdom from the pastor and mama, Rose finally calmed down. Wilson asked for forgiveness for what he did to Sarah and pleaded with Rose for forgiveness. After counseling from the pastor, Rose agreed to forgive him reluctantly. They all went to Sarah's grave to ask for forgiveness. And after much begging from everyone, there was a heavy storm in the air, signifying Sarah's forgiveness and the reversal of the course she had laid. After the storm passed, the pastor informed Wilson that Sarah had forgiven him, which made him very happy. Everyone was relieved and happy about the reconciliation. Wilson also took the opportunity to bond with his three grandchildren and his in-law for two days before they all went back home. Lisa received a surprising call from her recently estranged boyfriend who apologized and expressed his intention to come and meet her family for their marriage rights. Overjoyed and taken aback, by the sudden change, Lisa hurriedly went to Wendy's room to share the exciting news. To her amazement, Wendy had received a similar call from her own boyfriend. The sisters were very happy and quickly told Rose the good news on the phone. She is happy for them too and promised to attend their weddings. Kiara and Desmond's relationship got even better. Kiara thanked Desmond for always being there and helping them understand their family's past. She said without him, they wouldn't know as much as they do now. After a few months, Lisa, Wendy and Kiara married their dream partners. Wilson spent more time with Rose and over time, she forgave and forgot the past. Rose accepted him as her father and even allowed her children to spend holidays with him. The curse on Wilson's daughters not only disappeared, but also made Wilson realize he had a daughter he never knew about. Kiara, Lisa and Wendy's mother, who had left Wilson years ago for no reason, also found her way back home. Wilson's family is finally complete. Every year, he visited Sarah's grave to apologize and promise to be a good father to Rose and also a good human. The pastor also emphasized the importance of not hurting others, as it could affect not only them, but also their children. He encouraged them to be kind to everyone they meet, and to strive to be good people. They all agreed to the pastor's advice, and promised to not only be good individuals themselves, but also to teach their children and those around them to do the same. And the moral of this story is never toy with people's hearts and also their emotions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell below for more videos. And also like, share and comment. Thank you. See you on our next video. Bye.